Hey everyone, it's Mark Skipper Mark, and today we are heading up to the Thousand Islands in upstate New York and the town of Alexandria Bay. The ride up was very scenic and there wasn't too much traffic, which was nice. We arrived in the dark and went straight to the hotel. We stayed at the Otter Creek Motel, which was right on a bay on the river, and they had docks and we were right next to the town ramp. Our priority was getting out on the river so we didn't eat breakfast and headed straight for the boat ramp. This here is the street to the boat ramp. I think this is the Alexandria Bay town boat ramp. I'm not exactly sure but uh, a lot of people have been using it. There's nobody here to collect a fee or anything. There are a bunch of boat ramps that are at marinas and at state parks, things like that. There's no parking here though, so uh, you have to take your trailer and park it over at a place called the Ice Rink. But since we're staying at the hotel right here, we're able to leave our trailer up front. They have spots where you can park trailers. As we were heading out of the bay, we saw our first large ship, which was cool. There's actually a lot of large ships that traverse the river all types, oil tankers, uh, they're hauling metal, you know, iron ore. Here's some of the ones that we saw. No, he did not. It was funny because sometimes we'd see the boats downriver and then we'd hit upriver and we'd see them up there as they were heading out to sea. They go surprisingly fast and push a large amount of water out of the way. Some of the ships are only four to five hundred feet and some of them are even longer at like 700 and maybe 800 feet. All right, so we are ready to go start exploring. The weather calls for some rain, but hopefully it'll clear up. It's very hazy today. And that's because of all the wildfires that are happening up in Canada. And one thing about the Thousand Islands, the river is literally split between Canada and the United States. So we're currently in America, or United States of America, but um, we could go over to Canada. And you can go into the Canadian waters, but you don't have to get out or claim that you're there as long as you just stay on your boat don't talk to anybody and don't anchor or touch their land so I'll post a link to the all the laws down below so you know exactly what they are because you don't want to fool around with ending up in a foreign country by mistake and having them seize your boat or put you in jail so our first stop is going to be Bolt Castle it's uh, a historic house that some guy built for, I think his wife, um, but she passed away, so the house never got finished until later on in years. But not by him, because he never visited it again. So I'll post a link to that in the description below. But it's only 0.8 miles away, so even though on the map here, or chart, it looks like it's kind of far, it's really not. So we're gonna head there and check that out. This is the Ulster Tower, which is modeled after a German defense tower. It houses a bowling alley and a stage for performances. This building is the powerhouse, which generated power for the island via steam. If you're in America, the United States, and want to go to Canada, you can stop here at the Customs and Border Patrol office and pick up a tag or a number or something that they'll give you. Uh, so when you come back into America, you present that and I believe it helps with your re-entry. This building here is the Bold Castle Yacht House. This is where all the boats that the owner owned would be kept but again because I don't think he ever finished the house I don't think he ever actually came up here after driving around the castle we decided to head for Canadian waters 
even though it was overcast, the water along the way was very green and pretty. I hope the camera's picking it up, but the water here is amazingly green. It's because it's so hazy today, it's really kind of hard to tell, but on sunny days, it's just crystal clear and super, super pretty green. Also, I wanted to note that we have crossed over into Canada. So this black line here is the border between Canada and America, North America, the United States. And uh, we have crossed that line. So we are technically now in Canadian waters. This bridge connects Canada to America and the areas underneath it are called the Narrows. There's the American Narrows and the Canadian Narrows. When we went through the Canadian Narrows, the water was crazy rough. It's rough on the American side too, but it's more from boat traffic. On the Canadian side, it's rougher from the current. I really like the Canadian side of the river and thought that it was prettier than the American side. For the most part, the river was well marked and had buoys that designated dangerous and shallow areas. We did find a few areas that had rocks that were just sticking out of the water and there was no markers anywhere around. The St. Lawrence River connects the Great Lakes to the ocean and people use it as a way to make a big journey all around the eastern United States, even down to Florida. One of the places in Canada that we wanted to see was the Thousand Islands National Park. It was one of the prettiest areas that we saw during our trip. I'm pretty sure this was a private house, but there are cabins that you can rent on the islands, and you can also tent camp if that's your thing. I'll provide a link below with more information about the park. Our next destination was Half Moon Bay, which is somehow connected to the Catholic Church. We just wanted to see the area because the internet said it was beautiful. As we all know, the internet never tells lies, and they were correct again. The area was absolutely beautiful. I really like this part of the river because there was a lot of channels that took you through narrow areas and you passed a lot of cool markers and buoys. On our way to the bay, we passed a town called Gananoque, which was pretty nice looking. The town only has 5,000 residents, but it looks like it has a lot of stuff. They have a Tim Hortons, which we no longer have near where we live. And we thought about going, but we didn't want to deal with customs, even though we've heard it's pretty easy when you come in via boat. If you want to come here and don't have your own boat, don't worry about it. There's tons and tons of tourist boats. There's everything from historic paddle wheel boats to big modern tour boats. Half 
Moon Bay is something of a surprise. You come around this unassuming point of land, and then all of a sudden, bam, right in front of you is this most gorgeous green water. And the further into the cove itself you go, the greener and prettier it gets. their soil. It's deep here. What you got there? Is that a heath? Yeah. It's melted. Yeah. I didn't mean to put it in the bag, but yeah. As a boater, one of the things you have to watch for is grass in the water. There's a lot of plants that grow really tall up from the riverbed and they sit right under the surface of the water or they break off and just float on the surface of the water. I was always nervous that we'd suck some of that into the impeller of our wave runner, but we never had a problem, thankfully. It's just something you have to be aware of when you're boating there. After spending some time at Half Moon Bay, we decided to head on and enjoyed more beautiful scenery around Canada as we made our way back to America. So this is still just the St. Lawrence River, but I didn't realize how wide it is. I always thought it was narrow, you know, like a couple miles wide. Now, I looked on the internet before we left and measured the widest part, and it was only six miles wide. But to me, this seems wider than six miles, but you know, I, I don't know. I marked a waypoint, so I'm, when I get home, I'm going to measure the distance and see exactly how wide it is and how long it is in this area that we are now. One area that we found particularly interesting and very stinky was this island that was just full of birds. It was unmarked, and it just reeked terribly, terribly bad. If you're into birds, there's a lot of types up here, including loons and bald eagles. This is the town of Clayton, New York. Unfortunately, my GoPro had an issue and the video came out all jittery and you couldn't even see it. So this is all the footage that I got. I was able to get a video of the Thousand Islands Harbor Hotel, which is probably one of the fanciest in the area. After leaving Clayton, we went to the Picnic Point State Park, which I discovered when looking at Google Maps. It's this really nice park that has a gazebo and places for grilling and everything you need to have an outdoor barbecue. There's no camping here, but it was a nice place to explore. And they have some really nice bathrooms, if you can call a pit toilet nice. A group was having a party while we were there, so we walked around the island and then came to the gazebo after they had left. This area looks like it's also popular with boaters because there was a lot of boats tied up out in the water. As we made our way through the American Narrows Channel, I was impressed by these trees that were leaning. Because the prevailing winds are so strong from the west, they just grow that way naturally. As we made our way up through the American Narrows, we saw the largest wave that I have ever seen before. It was so huge, it was like five feet tall, and I really wasn't sure how to handle it. So I did the best I could, and I kind of freaked Nancy out in the meantime because I was playing around a little bit. Faster. 
going with the current. She got all mad because I told her we were going to lose it. Well, I didn't know what to do because there was two of them. And I think if I hit the first one, I went over the first one, then the second one was huge. After making it back to Alexandria Bay, we decided to take a few pictures and tie up our boats for the night. So we're back at the hotel after an adventuresome day out on the water. It was a lot bigger than I thought it would be and it was actually a lot rougher than I thought it would be. But the boats are tied up. Don't know what the weather's gonna be. They're calling for rain, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully we'll be able to go out again. After tying up our boats, we decided to head downtown and grab a bite to eat. We wanted some greasy cheeseburgers and thought the whole scoop might have them, but they had already shut down their grill. We ended up going to Coleman's and had some amazing southern barbecue nachos and other food. We also discovered Kathy's, which became our breakfast place of choice. We went into the tourist shops and found some nice t-shirts to help us remember the trip. The itch to get back on the water was calling us, so we went down to the docks to check out the nearby marinas so we could see where to get gas. We ended up going to JP's Marine and found out it was actually the owners who were pumping our gas. Like so many other businesses, they're having trouble finding help, and they actually are selling the marina, so if you're interested in buying one, it's a great deal. We ended up in an area that I called the Flatlands because the water was so calm. There's a lot of videos of it later, but we had to head back because it was getting dark. As we were leaving, a boat decided to pass super, super close to us. It's annoying because everybody complains about people on PWCs, but I find tons of boaters who are terrible drivers. We did have time to run down to the bridge so Matt could get a nice sunset picture. After tying up the boats, we decided to head down to the docks and see what kind of activity there is during the evening. There is a dock fee, but you can stay for just a couple hours or for extended stays. The town provides dock hands who help grab your boat when you're pulling in, and I'm guessing you would give them a tip when you're done. This white boat, the Sea Turtle, was from Guntersville, Alabama, and the orange boat was from Ontario. If you're a Canadian citizen entering the U.S. or you're a U.S. citizen returning from Canada, you have to go through customs. On a boat, it's different than in a car. Along the river are border patrol stations where you contact the border patrol either on an app on your phone or with an iPad that's provided at the station. I'm not 100% certain, but from watching other YouTube videos, I think if you use the app on your own phone, you don't even have to get off your boat. You just call the Border Patrol either from the app on your phone or the iPad that they provide, and you talk to them for a couple minutes, and they do their thing and determine if you're eligible to enter the country or not. As darkness was settling in, we decided to go to a nearby park and watch the sunset. While we were there, a couple big ships came by, and we enjoyed arguing over how to pronounce their names. After the sun had set, we went back to the docks and then headed to our hotel because we wanted to get up early and get out and get boating again.